Hello, everybody. This is Benny Hills back with my first vintage cube draft of the season. So very excited about this. I decided to celebrate the occasion with a shirtless video. So hopefully I'll enjoy or at least hopefully it's not too painful. I'm really excited for this format to be back. Personally, I actually think I might have liked Supreme Vintage Cube better by the end or at least not worse. I definitely it took me some getting used to. So I didn't love it at the beginning, but by the end, I really did like it a lot. But I'm excited to have this back. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I ended up second place in the trophy race to Team J Bro in the last one. So a uh, tight battle, but props to them for finishing it off. I uh, have my eyes set on them, though. Eyes on the prize for this one. So I'm sure we'll be a trophy later this time around. They're off to a head start, obviously, with three trophies before I've started. But I'm not too worried. I think we got this. So I will see you right now in the draft. Okay, good start. Very good start. I like the Thieving Skydiver still here. Um, it's quite a bit worse in this format than it was in Supreme because, like, I mean, most decks won't even have a mock, or maybe they'll have one. It's not like this is just like guaranteed to steal an artifact and like often even better than a mox. Um, so that's good, but I think I'm going to go with the DAC here. DAC is just really, really strong. It's better than Thieving Skydiver. Um, and like the card draw is good. And also, you're going to play against fewer Hull Breachers and Narsets. So the plus is less likely to be dead. Um, there's also Polluted Delta. And I mean, we could just take the Skydiver, could take Stomping Ground. You already know I, I'm going to have my eyes set on some white, white weenie at some point in this draft, but nothing here pulls me in that direction. So pretty easy deck. I think this is a great card. And uh, yeah, we're only be taking one card from the pack, but all right, whatever. So now this is a pretty bad pack for us. Clearly the person before us took a blue card. So we should uh, consider that. We could take a Boros Signet here. We could take Duress. Primeval Titan is good. Um, there's a fetch land. It doesn't really help too much with Dak, but you can never really go wrong with a fetch land. But I think I like taking a Boros Signet here. It feels painful to be playing Signets in a for after playing, you know, a bunch of Moxen in all my decks, but I think that's the right pickup here. I mean, we could just take the prime time. Actually, maybe I will go the prime time. Boros Signet's pretty replaceable. If this was like an Izzet Signet or like a, you know, basically any blue Signet, that would be one thing. But... Primeval Titan is very good, and I also, like, green was so bad in Supreme Vintage Cube, I think it was by far the worst color, and that meant that people sort of maybe forgot how good it was, and I, yeah, I think I'm going to go with the prime time here over the Boros Signet. Okay, well, not much green here. There's a Fumeral, there are some blue cards here. Um, it In this format, unlike the last one, you can't afford to waste some picks, so it's not a big deal if we end up with one of these and don't play it. Um, we could take the Signet here. Spellseeker is quite a bit worse in this format than it was in the last because there's no, you're not as likely to get Ancestral or Time Walk or something. We could just take a Bolt, but I think I like taking the blue Signet. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, there's a Wasteland. It does look like green is not actually that open, so we probably won't be playing this. Um, we could take an Emery. We could take a Path since we do have the Signet here. Hmm. Yeah, I think I like taking a path. All right. Well, hmm. So, these there are blue cards in this pack, but they're not very good. We could take opposition, but we could also just take sort of fire and ice. It does look like white is pretty open. Um. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take the sword here. This is in my probably the best sword in my opinion. Uh, it has. I mean. It's close. It's sort of body and mind, and Feast and Famine are both good, too. But I think this is probably the best, and we can di ditch these three picks and just go into Mono White, potentially. I mean, there have been a decent number of white cards in each pack. We didn't take the Vryn Wingmare, which could be a little bit unfortunate if we do end up with Mono White, but we'll see. Okay, that late of a Stone Forge, plus no blue cards, plus, like, just one Yavi Maya Elder in green. I think this is where we're supposed to be. Yeah, I'll take the Stone Forge. There's also a Soul Scar Mage which is pretty nice, but I think I'm supposed to take this. Ooh, well, that's a late Thief of Sanity. But I think I go with the Caracas here. I really like Caracas a lot. Um, and now, and if we're getting it in this pack, we can prioritize, you know, Legends in future packs. So I'll pick up the Caracas. Okay, yeah, really late Kithian. All right. Probably cutting the Signet too. We, uh, I mean, I can't say I'm that surprised. I sort of... 
I knew I was going to be in mono white pretty early. Uh, didn't necessarily know if it would be the first draft or not, but here we are. Kithine is nice with Caracas. It's already pretty hard to kill, and now it's even harder. You can even Caracas back the Planeswalker version of him if they go for like a path when he's a 4-4 on your turn. Not too much for us here. I guess I'll just take the Bane Slayer for the board. Maze of it can be okay. If they have like one good blocker, you can just save your attacker of it. But I think I just go with the Bane Slayer here. It's actually a good sideboard option in some matchups. It does look like white is pretty open, but it's not like perfectly open. It's not like we're going to be getting literally every single white card that's opened is, is my guess. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Obviously, you want your color to be as open as possible. And in particular with white weenie, the reason to draft it is because it's open. It's not like blue where like you don't need it to be that open for it to still be good. So we'll see. This could get dicey, but uh, each of these cards that we have are very elite. Like these are all absolutely in the best possible version of white weenie. And okay. All right. Well, this is nice uh, that these are both coming around. All three are coming around. We could go with the body and mind. Hmm. This does give protection from green, which I like. I think I'm actually going to take this. Tide Taker and Alistair are both okay. I would take Swords to Plowshares or Dante Vanguard over it, but like this is one of the less good two drops and one of the less good removal spells. So I think I would rather take that. Oh, not nice. Now we get like, we need some number of just like curve fill or two drops and we just passed one and now we get one. So that's pretty nice. I think this is maybe slightly worse than the last one, but not by much. They're both two power, two drops that have like a slight disruptive ability and uh, they can both carry swords. So we can take the sword and then take the Adlon when we get it. Ooh, okay. Getting the Vryn Wingmere on the wheel is very nice. That's a late Inquisition. This card is like almost first pickable potentially, but we are certainly taking the Vryn and very happy about that. Not only is this a good disruptive body, but it can carry equipment well. Oh my gosh, that's a disrespectfully late Bob. Recruiter's okay, but I think I like taking the Amiri's call here. It looks like we're going to have a surplus of playables. So taking a card that can upgrade our mana base is pretty nice. And we even get the Parallax Wave on the wheel. That's great. Maybe we can pick up the Containment Priest to pair with this. Although even if we can, it's playable just as like, uh, you know, you, you can just remove three creatures and like get through your last couple of key attacks. It does go away eventually, but that doesn't matter too much if you're just beating them down and killing them. All right, no power here, unfortunately, but we do get Thalia, which is one of the best cards we could have gotten. Um, yeah, I think it's a pretty easy Thalia. Honestly, a pretty weak pack. To learn Academy is good in some decks. I'm used to it being insane, and it's not in this format as much. Fast Bond has high potential. Factor Fiction is fine. Um, but yeah, really not too much here. Easy, easy Thalia. Maybe we wheel the Sensei's top, although I don't even think we want that. We're probably just going to wheel nothing from this pack, but that's okay. Okay, now we have Silverblade Paladin and Adanto Vanguard. They're both really good, and I would like them both. I think I'm going to go with the Adanto Vanguard. For two reasons. First of all, I think two drops are just better than three drops. That You really want to have a low curve in this deck, especially when you can't rely on getting a bunch of Moxon. And secondly, I think it's slightly more, uh, less likely to come around. They're both very likely to come around. But this takes double white, and this only takes a single white. So there's a world where there's someone drafting like red-white aggro, and they can splash this, but not this. So for both of those reasons, we'll take the Adante Vanguard and hope to wield the Silver Blade. Condemn would be a decent pickup for the board for just like, you know, the mirror against mono red or something. So if this gets taken and condemn comes around, it's not a disaster, but I definitely want the Vanguard here. Right now we really need some one drops. Ooh, well, that is nice. There's also a probe, which I do like, but I don't think we really need it, especially, actually, yeah, we don't really want this. If we're playing Vernon Wingmare and Thalia, a two mana probe is not very nice. So we can take the three Inspector, Spectre, which is the most important card, and then hopefully wield the Ravages of War. This card's better when you're playing like Mox Diamond or Chrome Mox or just actual Moxon, which we are not at the moment, but I still think it would be a nice curve topper in certain matchups, but definitely taking the one drop here. Uh, the games where you lead on a one drop go much, much better than the games where you don't when you're playing Mono White or any aggressive deck, but um, certainly Mono White. This is an excellent pack for us. Blade Splicer would be good. Armageddon, like I said, would be solid, but pretty easy strip mine here. Strip Mine was basically unplayable in Supreme Draft because everyone had Moxon, but it's a lot better here. In fact, it's just genuinely a great first pick in this format. So we can take this, upgrade our mana base, which, you know, there's almost no cost since we are mono white, almost definitely. We also don't even have 
Figure of Destiny or Student of Warfare, which are cards that really make you want to have as much white mana as possible. So really just no downsides for a great upgrade. Very happy to take a strip mine. Hopefully the Blade Splicer comes around, but if it doesn't, that's not the end of the world. Okay, now I can take a Hero of Bladehold. It's pretty good. I don't want to have too many four drops, but this is one of the best ones. This El uh, four mana Elspeth and four mana Gideon are all good four drops, but um, yeah, they're all solid playables. This card just wins the game so fast. It hits for seven on its own, and if you have any other creatures, then it scales very well, and then even if they deal with it, even just getting one attack in is usually enough to win the game. So, very, very happy to have the Hero of Blade Hold. It's obviously much better if you have some acceleration. So, I would love to pick up even like an Ancient Tomb. Just like Plains, Kithian into like Ancient Tomb, Vernon Wing Mirror into like Plains, Hero of Blade Hold is just a broken start. Oh, every bone in my body wants to take a Teferi just because that's pretty much just how I roll. But we should definitely take the Containment Priest here. Fills the curve well. It's good against Reanimator, which can be one of our toughest matchups. Also good against Mono Green with like Green Sun Zenith and Tooth and Nail. Actually, I guess Turn Timber Symbiosis now that they replaced Tooth and Nail. Um, but this is a great pickup. Also very good with Parallax Wave. You can uh, exile their things and then when they come back off the Parallax Wave, Containment Priest means they don't actually come back. The other really good combo with this is Flicker Wisp. So hopefully we can pick up that. Although it's not as nice with Restoration Angel. So, wow, there's some good cards in this pack. Archangel, I mean, all three of the white cards are decent for us. Marsh Flats is also good, and Uro. We don't have any reasons right now to need a fetch land. I guess, I mean, this would be good if we also got the Lingering Souls, but we can't get both. We could just take the Souls and hope to pick up a Black Land later, but I don't really think that's worth it. I think it's between Oblivion Ring and Archangel Avacyn. And that's close. I don't like five drops in general, but this is my favorite of the five drops. Hmm. I think I'll go with the Angel over the Oblivion Ring. Oblivion Ring is good, but it's just a little bit, like, you know, it's three mana. It can be clunky. It's not great with these cards. So I think that's what we take here. And now let's see. Winds of Abandon versus Hallowed Fountain. Winds of Abandon is okay, but I think I like taking the Fountain here. If we got, like, a Time Walk or something, I would want to splash. And I don't really want to be playing this card. We already have Path. We have Parallax Wave. So we have some creature interaction. So I'll go with a high upside pick of the blue mana. Well, there's the title. This was our original pack, and it didn't have any other white cards, so I'm not alarmed by the fact that nothing came around. I'll take this in case we get really good fixing, but don't really expect to play that. Nice. Got the Silver Blade Paladin back. This is really good in general, and especially good with the swords, which we have two of, so that's pretty cool. So at this point, other than a Mox, by far the number one priority is more one drops. Only having two one mana plays is very unfortunate. But I don't think anyone else is playing Mono White. Ooh, nice. Make a Ravages. So I think if there is... Like, I don't think that other White 1 drops have been opened yet. So, I mean, it's possible they just won't get opened. But I do think it's not unlikely that we'll get an above average number of 1 drops in Pack 3. Which is very good. And we will take them very highly. Ooh, okay. I think I go with the Blade Splicer over the Armageddon here. There's that Black Fixing, but... I want to have an, a high enough creature count. Like, we have Vrindling Mare, Anthalia, and Swords, so we really want to have a lot of creatures, and we already have Ravages of War. I don't really think we need Armageddon 2. But I think that can actually be a reasonable sideboard option, so I'll take that for the board. Blow up some enchantment, sure. And then last pick, Lingering Souls. That could actually come in in some matchups, especially if we get another Sword or, like, a Skull Clamp. All right, so for pack three, we have a decent start. Well, not really. Well, there's two cards we want. No power, obviously, which is unfortunate. Legion's Landing and Ancient Tomb would both be solid. I think I care a little bit more about the Legion's Landing, but I really think it's going to come around. And Ancient Tomb is also quite strong. We don't have any colorless two drops that we can play on turn one off of this, but we have multiple three drops that are good to play early. And I mean, it, again, it's basically free. And against all but the most aggressive red decks, we will be the aggressor. So the life loss doesn't really matter. So I think we'll take this with the plan of Wheeling the Legion's Landing, and if this doesn't come around, we will cry bitter tears. Oof. Oh, no, no, this pack is great. Well, actually, yeah, it's just not, the white cards are not great. That was where my eye went first. But the other cards are quite strong. There's Smuggler's Copter and Mutavolt. They're both really, really good. I would love to play, in, I would say the ideal 
Mono white deck is playing four colorless lands. So, and three is definitely great. So like beyond four, they start to have a decent cost, but the Mutavolt would be mostly free and very nice for us. But Copter is just like one of the best two drops. We can turn one off of Ancient Tomb and it filters, it flies, it hits hard. It's really just a perfect card. The only downside is it's awkward with Brindley Marinthalia, but we, yeah, I think that's fine. Still a very nice card. So I will be taking it here. Hopefully the Mutavolt comes around. That's possible, but uh, not a guarantee. Notable that like, if this was another really good white two drop, like a Leon and Relic Warder, then I might would take the Mutavolt first and wheel it. But this goes in many different decks. It goes mono red, mono white, uh, can go in mono green for card filtering and just anything that, you know, maybe even an Artifacts Matter deck. So that would be unlikely to wheel. Ooh. I've never played with Benevolent, Benevolent Bodyguard. It seems a little bit underpowered to me, but I do want one drop, so I think I would play it. But I definitely want to take Skull Clamp here. We have the Stone Forge to find it. That makes Lingering Souls look a little bit better. Um, and it's also just a good card in its own right. So we will pick that one up and hope to wheel the Bodyguard, which it, it should come around. I would be pretty shocked if this got taken by anyone else. Ooh, Library. Legionnaire and Gideon. Hmm. All three of these are absolutely great for us. I think I like the Legionnaire a bit better than the Gideon just because it's cheaper. Also another good play on turn one off of Ancient Tomb, but I do love Library. Um, hmm. Let's see, right now we have 19 spells. So we're gonna be making some tough cuts. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take the Library. One of these two really good attackers will wheel. I hope it's the Legionnaire, but I think Library is really strong. Some people are haters, and I respect that. I was a hater in Supreme. I thought it was usually a little slow in Supreme. But I think in normal Vintage Cube, it's good. Okay, not the greatest pack for us, but we can take a Mentor. I would love to play Bitter Blossom and Skull, and, uh, Skull Clamp, but I don't think we're going to be able to do that. We're not really going to be splashing here. Mentor is... Okay, probably won't make the cut, but I do think it is the pick here. Ooh, Mother of Runes is a great pick up. There's also Godless Shrine and Unexpectedly Absent. Don't really like Gideon, but obviously, or I guess definitely taking Mother of Runes. It's a one drop. It's probably the best one drop. Great with swords for pushing through damage, so very happy about that. And nice, we got one more uh, one drop. All right, the one drops came through in the end. So now we have, I mean, Skull Clamp is an okay play on turn one, and then we have... Four good creatures, and we could maybe even wheel a bodyguard, so that looks nice. I'll take the student. Four deck with no power and no acceleration, like including Chrome Mox or Mox Diamond or something. This deck looks really strong to me. Uh, I'm going to cut, so in the ideal deck, we wouldn't be playing either of those two. But all of these I really would like to play. So right now, yeah, we do need a few more spells uh, to fill out the curve, but I think we'll be able to get there. We're getting these wheels. Hmm. Lapse of Certainty versus Sun Titan. I think I'll take the Lapse. This isn't great, but it can be a nice sideboard option against Storm. I actually think we already crushed Storm probably with our two tax effects, but still seems like a decent option for the board. I don't think Nykthos is good. I mean, it's fine. It, actually, I would take and play the Nykthos if we only had one colorless land, but we already have three. So I think it's not worth it here. Nice. Legion's Landing came around. Very happy about that. And the Mutavault. Ooh. Mutavault versus Linvala. I think I'm actually going to take Linvala here. Mutavault's good, but we already have three colorless lands. So it is getting to the point where there is some cost. And Linvala is genuinely a great sideboard option. I would probably play the Mutavault if I had it, but Linvala, I won't main deck this card, but it'll be the best card in the deck in some matchups, like especially against Mono Green, which can be a tough matchup. All right, the Bodyguard came around. Sure. And the Legionnaire came around. That's great. Okay, this deck is amazing. Very, very strong. We have a great low curve. Let's see. Right now, if we played 12 basic planes, this would be like... This is mostly land. Um, so I think we actually do want to play one more spell. Which would be probably... Hmm, it's actually pretty close. Maybe just Ravages of War. Yeah, one Ravages actually seems pretty solid. This is, uh, it's at its best in really low curve decks like this one, where you can go like one drop, two drop, three drop Ravages. Um, even though we'll put ourselves back on mana, we won't really need to play more lands at that point. So 
So if we play 11 basic planes, 15 and a half lands, and then also keep in mind that like some of these lands, or at least strip mine is basically a spell. And we have a really nice low curve, lots of one drops, lots of two drops, great Stoneforge package, some solid disruption. Yeah, I think this deck is really good. It's not the best white deck I've ever drafted. Uh, it really is missing like a Chrome Mox. That would go a long way if we could cut a planes for a Chrome Mox. But it's really strong. We have some reasonable sideboard options in Baneslayer, Wrath, Linvala, and Laps. Um, maybe even this if they have a lot of enchantments randomly. So yeah, I think this deck is sweet. I, uh, I mean, it feels underpowered compared to Supreme Vintage Cube, but I think it's going to be really, really good and fast. And I also think a lot of players are probably going to be a little dirty here. We'll see. Uh, but I have high hopes for this draft. So I will see you in round one. All right, here we are for round one against Lost at Sea. We, this hand looked bad at first because of the Amiri's Call not looking like a land, but it is a land, so it's a great hand. We can go Inspector into Copter or Stoneforge. Don't really like having Ravages and Strip Mine on the draw. The Mana Denial thing is more of a on-the-play thing, but we'll see. In worst-case scenario, we can always just loot it away. Ooh, they have an Amiria of their own, huh? Well, ours is coming to play untapped. Play and pay for life. And play Thraben Inspector. There's an argument to strip mining them on turn one, but I don't think it's worth it. Uh, yeah, I just, we don't have no pressure. That just doesn't accomplish that much. Seasoned Hollow Blade. Okay, so. I think I'll just leave this back to block. And would we rather get Stoneforge down or Smuggler Chopter? I think I like playing the Copter here. Stoneforge is a little expensive. We don't have Batter Skull to get. Um, so we'll just do this and pass. I also would like to continue hitting land drops. If they attack, I will just block with the Thraven Inspector. They can discard a card, but then that's good value for us. Like, there's, yeah. That would mean this is just like one mana to make them discard a card and get a clue and also soak up three damage, and I think that's worth it. I guess we did also pay three life to play it, but still worth it. Ooh, they have a Mox. That's not fair. Yep, so that'll take out our Smuggler's Copter. We'll see if they do go for the attack here. Interesting, all right. So we're gonna be basically adopting the control role here. Discarding a Flicker Wisp, wow, that's a good card. That's a good exchange for us. I think that was a bad attack. Planes, okay. So, we can either play Stoneforge Mystic and get a strip mod or get skull clamp or just play hold up uh no I think we I think I am gonna do that. It's not great, but then we can uh just block their season uh seasoned hollow blade. And if they just keep on discarding cards to that while we're not taking damage, that's a good trade for us. Grab skull clamp. I don't even really care about the skull clamp, but this just lets us use our mana more efficiently. They did miss a land drop, so there's an argument to strip mining, but we have an expensive hand, so I don't think that's really where we want to be. Man, they really are just kamikaze their hand here with a Seasoned Hallow Blade. That might be the right line, but... Oh, they just let them trade. Okay. So that can name Skull Clamp, I guess. Don't really care about that. We weren't particularly planning on using that anyways. So I'm just going to go Planes Pass. I guess we could strip mine them now. Hmm... No, I think I like the... We have some powerful heavy hitters in our hand. So I'm just going to play Planes and Pass, holding up Containment Priest plus Cracking Clue. They're, and then there's a good chance they'll play around Restoration Angel and not attack, which would be really sweet for us. Or they might go um, hold up Mana Tithe. Okay, they do attack. I think I'm going to block the, the Skyclave here. I would like to unlock this, but I think interacting with the board is more important at this point. Plus, if we draw a land and we can hit them with a sword, that would be really important. That would be really good. And as a final factor, this is a 2-1, so it's easier to kill. We can kill this with like a 1-1. One, one. Hero of Bladehold. Okay. 
That's pretty good. I would love to find Parallax Wave. So we can either play and equip the sword or hold up Archangel Avacyn. And that is a pretty close decision. But I think it's better to hold up Archangel Avacyn. So we'll pass. This just hits too hard. I, we, we would take 10. I mean, we would have a 2-2 back to block from the sword hit, but I don't think that's worth it. Gideon. Okay, so they can give their hero indestructible, which is a little bit annoying. Man, Mono White versus Mono White. It really feels different than uh, Supreme Vintage Cube did. If they had Mana Tithe, that would be absolutely devastating. I wish we had Mana Tithe. Vigilance. Okay, that's good for us. We'll see if they're pro players. They're not pro players. They stack their triggers wrong. So we'll take four here. Oh, no, we'll only take two. Yeah, that's great for us. Trade off and block. Oh, wait, it's not even a trade because it's indestructible. So, yeah, now we're just, like, probably insurmountably ahead. Ooh, so now we can go play this to protect our Archangel. All right, that just seals the deal, I guess. So we're playing the Mirror. Their deck looks good. I mean... Skyclave Apparition is a great card. I really wish we had that. Season Hellblade, Revoker, and they have a Mox. So honestly, their deck looks a little bit better than ours, I think. But hopefully our play skill is a little better than theirs. We can bring in Wrath of God. Okay, yeah, we're going a little bigger here. Wrath of God, Baneslayer, Angel. Is Linvala good? Probably not. Although it's sort of funny against Gideon. It's a, play it's a creature on their turn, so they can't use it. Um, even though it's like not really a creature. And then we can cut Skull Clamp. Maybe even cut the sword. I just, like, equipment is too slow. It, like, I don't want to spend mana equipping it. And then... Do we want to make... I don't think we want Ravages of War, especially on the draw. We could bring in the Mentor or the Linvala. I guess we'll bring in the Linvala. It seems solid, although it is a little expensive, I guess. But I think this is what we'll do. Yeah, we'll run it like this. I will see you in game two. All right, great hand here. The classic four creatures, Wrath of God hand. Um, I do like it a lot, though. We can get... I guess I do sort of wish we had a Skull Clamp here if we're going to be going for a more controlling game and we have a Wrath of God in hand. But really, I only want Skull Clamp if I have Wrath of God to catch up when we're behind because Skull Clamp does... Put you behind on board, and we're on the draw, so that doesn't seem great. Um, we can go one draw. Ooh, they mold to six. Okay. Giver of Runes. Well, we have a one-two of our own. Vainslayer was an okay draw, but we do need to hit some land drops. The strip mine is not looking ideal. Port. Ooh. I really don't want them to port us. I mean, if they do, they do. They're not advancing their board. Actually, I guess that would be fine if they do that, but it would mean we can't do anything on our turn. Adanto Vanguard, okay. Vanguard is good. I think I'm just going to play the Stoneforge Mystic here. It takes a draw out of our deck, and um, yeah, I mean, it helps us draw land, and we don't have good blocks either way. Adanto Vanguard is good against um, Wrath of God, unfortunately. But Baneslayer Angel can go way over the top of it, especially if it has a sword on it. So, that could be okay. If they play Gideon, I'll regret not having played the Eidolon, but it's not the end of the world. Although, I guess Gideon is another card that plays around Wrath of God well. I would actually consider blocking with a Thraben Inspector here normally, but we don't even deal four to them here because they have the Giver, so no real value there. If they go for a port in our upkeep, I'm just going to crack the clue in response. Since our top priority is hitting land drop here, like, we do have things we want to develop, but that's not as important as hitting land drops when we have a hand like this. I guess we could have also put the sword into play, but I think this is better. <laughs> uh, 
All right. We can attack for two here. Yeah, I think that's free. I guess they could condemn us, but that's definitely fine. They didn't even block. All right. We take three again, down to 14. We do need to deal with this Dante Vanguard eventually. Dahlia, well, that's good against Wrath of God. If we draw a land, we can uh, play and equip the sword, although I guess that doesn't do that much. Yeah, I think I'm going to just put this into play. Hopefully we can draw a land. Nice. So we play land, and then do we want to hold up the... Um, the Containment Priest, or just play the Eidolon, or equip the Sword. Equipping the Sword doesn't do that much against the Giver of Runes, so I think I'm just going to play the Eidolon. The Giver of Runes is annoying. So I think I'm actually, part of me wants to make block like this. If we do this, they can pay for life and give this indestruct or, or give this pro white, but then we can hit back with our stone forge. But, ah, that's pretty bad though. Cause they could also just play a creature or something. Um... I think I am going to do this. Just taking five isn't a winning position for us. And this makes them use the giver. If we can kill the giver with a stone forge hit, that would be great. Also, I mean, even if we just force the chump block with a stone forge, that's fine. Okay, so we just trade off with a Thalia. That's nice. So yeah, that ended up being a great exchange for us. We traded our bad two drop for their good two drop. And we traded our one drop for four life and or a seven point life swing. And it was even like, and it drew us a card. So that was great. Student of Warfare, Skull Clamp. Okay, so they poured us again. Okay, if we draw a land, I think I will just fire off the Wrath. Yeah, we'll do that. So we'll attack first. Nice, free point of damage. Which again, matters when they have a Danto, they're gonna pay four life here and go down to nine. Mono White Control, getting there. Oh, they did not pay the four life. That was not the correct play, I think. And now, I mean, our hand is stacked. Our life total is high. They play Flicker Wisp, which does nothing. They can draw two cards, I guess, if they want to with their Skull Clamp. So do we just... Ooh, I was going to just jam the... Blades, uh, Bane Slayer, but now that doesn't seem worth it anymore. We can just go... They also should have ported us. They, uh, I think it looks like they might have just given up. We can go Containment Priest main phase because I want to equip. And equip this here. And we will pass. I think I'm just going to take three here. I'd rather save this path to hit their blocker. I guess they might go post-combat Skull Clamp the Flicker Wisp, but that's fine. Okay, they are going for that. I'm not going to path in response. I want to use the path to clear the way with the Containment Priest, and I think even just getting in one Containment Priest hit will probably end the game. Revoker, okay. So they can sort of shut down our sword, but they also might just be Skull Clamping this. I will say, I, I think their deck might be better than ours. At least it's not clearly worse. Um, but luckily, I mean, I, I think it's good that there's sword, that there's a relevant gameplay here. And I, I think we uh, I think we have outplayed them a little bit. The, the Wrath of God sideboard tech is underrated, I think. People don't really think about that play, but it's really good. So we could, yeah, I think we just want to path this here. Oh, this is actually great. We path this. Then untap and play Silverblade to get in two sword hits. And that's actually just almost lethal. They go to one. 
So we'll play this. Pair. Hit. Okay, that is game. All right, very good start. 2-0 in the first round. I will see you in round two. All right, here we are for round two against Top Deck or Bust. Good name. Hopefully they don't get their top decks, though. And this hand is great. We have a nice low curve. I guess four and, uh, four and five drop isn't great. Although, multiple ways to protect Hero of Bladehold can win the game fast. And we can get whatever equipment is best here with the Stone Forge. So I like this hand a lot. We lead on Mother of Runes. This does give them a window to kill it. Whereas if we lead on the Benevolent Bodyguard, then they don't really have a window to kill it. So actually, maybe it would have been better to just play the Bodyguard on one. Yeah, I actually regret that. I think that was a misplay, but a minor misplay. I am going to, I mean, we're definitely not going in the library plan, and we're going to be tapping out every turn, so I'm just going to play this untapped so we can have maximum white mana and drop the stone forge. And I think with this sort of hand, I'm just going to get sort of body or sort of fire and ice. Yeah, the card draw, it has a card draw, but it also helps us kill them. No, it's, it's not right to attack, I think. It's close. I Like, a Hallowed Fountain probably won't have any two-mana removal if they didn't have one-mana removal. Okay, that's good for us. Now we can go... Ooh, Ancient Tomb. Well, now we can just play and equip the sword. Or play the hero. I think I actually like playing the hero more here. Because we can um protect it. I guess they could have a Wrath effect. That would be really unfortunate if they have turn three Wrath of God. We have decent follow-ups, but it would be bad. Oh no. Don't tap out for a board sweeper, please. Oh no, they have it. Oh, sneak attack. Wasn't really expecting that. But okay. So we can almost just kill them here. We can play and equip the sword and then hit them for, let's see, we don't need to tap our stone forge. So if we attacked all out, that would be seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and we would draw a card. We could play very conservatively and just leave back Archangel Avison to block a sneak attack creature. That would mean hitting them for eight. Hmm. I actually, or we would hit them for nine. I actually kind of think that's the correct play. Because, like, what are we gaining by hitting them for more? We probably win an exit attack step either way. Yeah, yeah, I think we're going to just do this. We'll attack with just these two. Make sure we stack our triggers right. So the battle tri trigger goes on the stack first, so it resolves second. Get our one ones, then hit them for the extra damage. They take nine, and they're certainly dead next turn. Then we can just pass, holding up an indestructible 4-4 four -four with protection from whatever color we want. So we're good against any single threat, even a Emrakul. I think we could beat that, right? We sack one, two, three, four, five, six, and then next turn we have lethal. Yeah, and we could block it. So we're good. I guess we could lose to Grizzlebrand into... Uh, Grizzlebrand's an argument in favor of attacking for more. We'll see what they have. Oh, Elish Norn would kill us. Dragon Lord of Tarka would not kill us because we could give our team indestructible in response. Massacre Worm would kill us. Massacre Worm would really kill us. Kozilek does not do almost anything. We can just sack all our lands. We have no need for lands at this stage. And if our Archangel Avison resolves, then we're safe against a board sweeper, which is the other thing that could mess us up. I mean, they could sneak in another thing. I guess if they have caused like plus another card with Annihilator. But we only need two cre we need Hero Blade Hold and literally any other creature, even Oh no, we need we need Hero plus a two power creature to kill them on our next attack.
Four mana, what's this? Pestermite, okay. Oh. Well, if they have Kiki as well, then we, that gets us too. I didn't think about that. Um, I guess I'll give it protection from red in response. They do have a red mana floating. All right, so do they have the Kiki? We can beat almost anything else. Okay, we can definitely beat that. Yeah, so it seems like we just win. We'll lose 20 cards, but then we kill them. Oh, wait, they do have a Pestermite back. Oh, but we can, uh... Oh, yeah, wait, that could potentially mess us up. I don't think... No, 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 we, we have plenty of damage. So, Archangel Avacyn... So we cannot sack any of our creatures because if a creature dies, this would flip and it would wipe our board. So we just sacrifice four lands. Max prevent by blocking the 12 damage. Going to three. And now they can block this, which prevents the most damage and still take way more than necessary. So we should be good to go. All right, sweet. So... Playing against Sneak Attack with also a twin combo. Their deck looks sweet. We They do have a Sneak Attack, which we can kill with the Tear, but I think that's a little too narrow. Like, usually when they play the Sneak, they're just killing you that turn. We could bring in Lapse of Certainty or Linvala. Linvala shuts down the twin combo, and Lapse of Certainty can just, like, delay the Sneak Attack for a key turn. Um, I think the Lapse is a little too underpowered, but I'll bring in the Linvala. And cut. Parallax Wave is okay against, I mean, it's good against Sneak Attack, but I think I would rather just have the Linvala here. Yeah, we'll run it like this. Annihilator and Exiling 20 cards are both pretty bad against us. We also have Caracas to defend against that, so I think that seems fine. And then, do we want, oh, Sword of Body and Mind seems quite bad because they don't have any green, and we can't mill them since Kozilek. So we could cut that for maybe it is just laps actually yep yeah, i'll run it like this see you in game two one other good card i should note in this matchup is containment priest which shuts down their uh sneak attack very nicely it's not quite as sweet as you would want it to be because they can just choose not to use the ability so it's not like you exile their thing it just means that they can't use the sneak attack but still pretty good Ooh, this hand is excellent. We just need to decide if we want to go in the library plan or not. And I think the answer is probably no. Although, yeah, yeah, we have, yeah. I'm just going to want to use my mana every single turn. If they were playing control and not combo, that would be one thing. But I don't want to just like library through a lot of my deck and then just die to um, Ulamog. Oust is annoying. Now we go Plains Adanto. All right, I wish we had Leon and Relic Warder. That would be a great addition for us. Now I think I'm just going to go Blade Splicer here. Use mana efficiently. And now Ancient Tomb would be the best draw because it would mean we could play and equip the sword next turn. But honestly, any draw would be pretty good. A land would be good or a spell since we have good uses of our mana either way. Do they have the sneak? They do. That's bad. Plain. So... We play that. I think we just attack with everything. 
and then play Sword plus Mother of Runes. I don't think getting the... Well, let's see, they're at 10. Playing the sword, like the alternative is just to play and equip or play and upgrade the student of warfare. I think it's, well, we'll see. Like, so if they have Ulamog, I don't care at all. That's just like a complete no factor thing. We don't need our last 10, we don't need our top 20 cards or that 10 life. If they play Kozilek, we probably want to just sack our lands, in which case I would rather just have more things on the board. If they play Ulamog, same thing. Yeah, I don't think playing the sword actually does anything. So I'm just going to play student plus mother of runes. They only have one red, so they can't sneak. I guess they could go pester my and sneak Kiki. That would kill us. Cause like, okay, yeah, that's fine. I'll just sack all my lands. Actually, so the last land can level up the Student of Warfare, which adds two damage, and the Blade Splicer deals one damage. So let's think about this. We, if we lose, if we sack all our lands and don't draw land, we're hitting for two, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And if we sack the Blade Splicer and then level up the Student with our last land, we hit for three, six, seven, ten. So that actually could matter. So I'll keep one land and sack the Blade Splicer. Of course, we could just draw land, in which case it won't matter, but... Uh, or they could play blocker, but I still think it's better to go for the kill that forces them to have something, no matter what, than the one that's, like, likely to put them to one. Hero Blade Hold. Okay, well, we can't kill them anymore. So now we just go level up student... Attack with everything except the Mother of Runes, hit them down to four. And then we'll, we can take a hit. If they have another sneak attack target, we could die. I guess even if they just play a red source, we could die. So we're actually not even going to save our thing. I think we're just going to hit with these. And then just hit them for six. Is that right? Yeah, I think that is right. Like, I don't want, right now we're dead to them having another creature or a red land. And saving the Student of Warfare doesn't do that much. We should be able to kill the next turn either way. If they attack, then they won't have any blockers. And if they don't attack, we can still attack with everything and force through exactly four. Again, I mean, they could just go attack you. Like, there's ways we could lose this for sure. But I think this gives us, or gives them the fewest outs. They need blockers here rather than just blockers or a red land. This is a weird card for them to be playing, though. They, they shouldn't be playing this. It's I mean, it's a decent defender here, I guess, but it's not... You don't want to play a four-mana card that just, like, can block a creature in this matchup, and it's not enough for a sneak attack target, so I don't think they should... Be, I mean, I don't know what their next best option is. It's possible that is the best play, but I don't think so. Okay, so right now we can kill them. Do we want to go for that? They have one card. Yeah, I think that's the right play. If they have something, they have something. They can survive at one. But yeah, I think that's the right play. We'll just make them have it. Oh, no, they do have it. Sneak attack on defense. Oh, okay. Just trying to scare us. I respect it. All right, sweet. We got that. That was a close game. Uh, very, very close. But we were able to pull it out. So we are 2-0. 2-0-4-0. Very strong start. Of course, Team J Bro already has four trophies. So uh, we're still way behind even if we get this. But again, you can't really do better than we've done so far. I played one. I played four games of this format and won them all. So hopefully we can finish it strong in the finals. All right, here we are for the finals against number one point. Number one pony, sort of. Um, another really great hand, so I'm happy about that. We will keep. We're on the draw, though, which is unfortunate. We can lead on Kithian into double one drop. Friendwing there, another good draw. Better on the play, but still good. If they play Fatal Push, that would be very sad. Entomb, that is 
Sadder. That's even sadder. So there's a lot of ways we could literally just die right this turn. So that's a little sad, but we'll see. Hopefully they at least don't have a two mana reanimate card. My guess is that their go-to is Grizzlebrand, and then they also have an anti-creature card, and they're deciding which one to get. And the answer is probably Grizzlebrand. Since they can afford to pay the life, I'll pop myself up at the top there, and I'll be blocking our beautiful Vrindwing Mare. Um, but yeah, I think Grizzlebrand would be scarier. Ulamog, okay, that's not that scary, because we can draw Path or um, that four mana card, Parallax Wave. Although I guess Parallax Wave would be too slow. Yeah, actually, this is sort of bad. This is bad. Kills us in two attacks. Reanimate. At least they're down to 10. Wow. All right. That's really good. Path? Um. Hmm. I don't think playing Ancient Tomb really does much here. I'm just going to play Plain Stoneforge. This takes one draw out of our deck and increases our chances very slightly of hitting the path. And out of these swords, probably Sword of Fire and Ice is the best. Body and Mind is a liability because it mills them. And Skull Clamp, we just don't want because we need to kill them. Blue Mana 2, that's good to know about. Ashiok, well, they're really going after our library here. I still think we're okay if we draw... Actually... Hmm. How much do we care about them seeing our library? We could concede now and conceal the... Um, the Containment Priest information. Do we think we can win if we top deck Path? We'll have... We'll be down 23 cards, so we'll have 7 cards in library. We draw Path and go Path plus Vryn. Yeah, we could actually win that. We can win that. I think the information, uh, that win percentage is low, but it's worth the information here. We did not lose our path. Oh, right. That would also be an answer, Caracas. We, yeah, we didn't lose the path. So now we have a one in six chance or one in seven chance. Rats. All right. So... Reanimator is a tough matchup for Mono White, unfortunately. Lapse of Certainty is okay against them. I don't think Linval is good. Um, is there anything here that we don't want? I don't really want the Sword of Body and Mind. Yeah, I think I'll bring in the Lapse for the Sword. They're both pretty slow three mana plays, but this one can win the game, and this one is just slow and helps them, sort of. And then Archangel Avacyn versus Bane Slayer is close, but I think I like the angel, this angel a little bit more. So we will run like this. Actually, I guess Ravages of War is sort of bad because they can um, just do their things with like one or two mana. Although it's still probably worth it. I, I think I'll still run it. Let's draw Caracas. No Caracas, but a good hand. I'll keep this. Strip Mine, we've only drawn in Land Light Hand, which is a little awkward. We've also keep on drawing Ravages and Strip Mine together, but we can go one drop into two drop into three drop. If we draw a white source, this is the worst one drop to lead on, but it's still okay. I don't want to get them the satisfaction. We'll play a Danto Vanguard and really hope to draw another land. Night's Whisper. Okay, that's not that scary. Land. Nice. So, Silverblade hits for three damage this turn. And then, let's see. Let's see. If we play, if we play Silverblade, we hit them for six this turn. Actually, I think that's just worth it. I think we just want to force three damage as fast as possible, not set up our board, really. Actually, yeah, especially we can't even give us bigger creature double strike. If we could play like a 4-4 this turn and then give the 4-4 double strike next turn, that would be a little closer, but here I think that's the right play. And now we have 10 points of damage next turn, so we can put them to 2. It's 
If we draw land, we'll definitely just fire off the Ravages of War. If we don't draw land, I still might even just go for a strip mine, depending on what they do, rather than develop our board more. We don't really need a board. We just need them to not mess up our board. All right, three mana. Be Ashiok. Okay, Lily is fine. So we'll sacrifice the Adanto Vanguard here because this can hit harder. Although now we do want to... Actually, hmm. Yeah, no, no, this is the right play. Yeah, this is the right play. So now we can go land, blade splicer, pair. I don't care about the lily. We can discard our Archangel Avacyn. Um, So I'm not going to pair it with this. No. But then we will pair with this. Yes. Strip mine. I'm actually going to hit a black source, even though blue islands are normally scarier. Here, the scary thing is in tune plus something else. We will attack them. I guess we could go for the Lily because Lily could discard, could give them a discard outlet. Hmm. That's very close, actually. Although, hitting them with... No, I'm just going to go for them. I, I'm still going to go face. They're like, if they're playing... We've seen reanimate so far. I mean, they could have, like, exhume type things as well. But so far, the only reanimation spell we've seen would kill them when they're at 8, so I think it's better just to go for face. I don't care at all about the interactive aspect of the plus. I only care about the enabler aspect, that it does let them discard a card, but I still think this is the right line. If they do discard, like, Dragonlord of Tarka or, El or uh, Massacre Worm or Elish Norn, like, those would basically kill us, but you can't play around everything in Vintage Cube. We just gotta pick what we're gonna play around. All right, they plus, we will pitch our five drop. If they do end up playing Exhum specifically, we can bring back Archangel Avacyn, which is pretty nice. Um, even if they have like a Elish Nolan, that can be somewhat of a clock. The reason why I didn't want to just fire off the, so the other line we could have taken that I should mention is we could have sacked the Silver Blade instead, not worried about playing any more creatures and then just played Ravages of War last turn to mean they can't do anything, but then we just hit them down to nine. They plus Lily. We hit them down to six. I guess we would then kill their Lily. Yeah, that would be a reasonable line. It would be a reasonable line. But I still think I like this a little more. Although we could get punished. Oh, they just hit Garganti. Okay. That's not scary at all. They could reanimate our Archangel Avacyn. But I still think that's not too bad. Right now, if we attacked with everything, they could, if they did reanimate anything, they could block this and then take five, go down to three. Looks like, yeah, Narcom uh, Necromancy. So presumably bringing back Archangel Avacyn. It would be extremely wrong for them to target Gaunti here. They don't need extra cards that like, that's not their limiting factor here. And Gaunti cannot kill our Golem. Okay, yep, they found the line. Props to the opponent. Well, <laughs> sure, that was a pretty nice draw. A land would have won us the game. I think Ravages would have done it. And, I mean, yeah, we had a lot of draws that would just win us the game, but that was certainly one of them. And now we can kill them and go to game three. So, do we want to make any changes now? We've seen Liliana and Gonti. I don't think that really changes our information set. And... Liliana is quite good against Baneslayer, Angel, and Linvala. We could bring in the Monastery Mentor. Lingering Souls is good against Liliana specifically. We could bring in the one Godless Run, bring in the Souls. But that's more setting us up for a grindy game. Liliana is like, when I think of Liliana, I think of grindy decks, but that's not what they are. Like, or at least in this game, they're a, they're a combo deck, not a grindy deck. So I'm not going to sideboard like they're grinding. So we'll just run it back like this and hope they don't have... A turn two kill. Or hope that we do have Containment Priest or Caracas. Hmm. Well, we have good one drop and a good two drop, but I don't think we can keep a five lander. Okay, this hand is great. We can keep put back our five drop, and Containment Priest is just huge. They do have Fatal Push, but they'll probably Fatal Push our 
Student Warfare. Wow, we even have the Containment Priest Parallax Wave combo. We don't have a fast clock, but we have good stuff going on. They didn't have Entomb there, which is nice. Kithian, okay. I think I'm just going to play the Eidolon this turn. We know they have Lily, and that shuts off Lily for a turn. And I really don't think we need to worry about a reanimation thing this turn. Play that Liliana. This would be so much better as Lothalia, but it's still good. Skull Clamp. Uh, that's not really the game we're playing here. So I think I'm going to go double level up and hit for five and then play Kithian and then next turn go Containment Priest. Actually, we could just go Containment Priest now. No, no, I think we want to be... Yeah, I think we'll, we'll do this. Plus, if we just passed, leaving a bunch of men up, that's sort of a giveaway. They have not... Oh, no, they did see the Containment Priest. So that's that's relevant. I mean, they could just go like languish here or something, which would be really bad. But I don't think I'm going to play around that without having seen it. I just want to put a clock on them and not give them time to hit their land drops. Gaunti. Nice. That's good for us. So if we draw land, I think I'll just parallax wave that. If we don't draw land, we can still attack with everything. Okay, beautiful. So, and then the Parallax Wave can also deal with any reanimation cards they play pretty well. So, be gone, Gaunti. They'll get their value later, but that doesn't matter. We get to attack and flip our Kithian. I guess I will give this Indestructible. doesn't really matter. And now they really need something. We can deal with any creatures with this Parallax Wave. We have a creature that they can't kill with a Board Sweeper. They could go like Island, Riftwing, Cloudscape, Bounce Gideon, and then survive at two. Or just play a board, like a Languish would mean they can survive at two also, because we have Skull Clamp. If they play Languish, we have an interesting choice, because we could save our things with a Parallax Wave, but that would mean they get their Gaunti back sooner. So I actually don't think that's worth it. I think our plan is just to win quickly. They have six cards. We're not going to out-card advantage them, so I don't think it would be worth it to do that. One thing to note is that they do have a card of ours with Gaunti, which could be Path. Five mana. Scarab God. <sighs> I mean, they just know that that's not enough. We have a literal onboard answer. Be gone, Scarab God. There's actually no reason to do that and Sep. We, could, we should technically just untap, but it doesn't matter. We got there. This goes down to two. And we got there. Beautiful. Mono White Trophy in the first league. That's a pretty uh, pretty good way to start. Can't say I'm really surprised. I really wish we could have gone 3060 instead of 3061, but can't really complain. This deck was very good. It didn't have any acceleration, but it had a great mana base. We never actually used Library, but Ancient Tomb and Strip Mine were both good. We never drew Caracas, but it would have been great. The key was having a lot of one drops. We basically had a one drop every single game. In fact, we might have had one literally every single game. And then, like, lots of two drops, good low curve. The swords were not that important. Really, it was a story of just, like, one drops, two drops, and then, like, dealing with their blockers. But really sweet league. Uh, feels great to get a trophy in the first one. Um, and as much as I love Supreme Draft, it's nice for normal Vintage Cube to be back, too. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed seeing me shirtless. And I will see you next time.